Thank you. And thanks for inviting me. It's been a, a very exciting morning and good to see all of you here. Uh, there are not that many people <laughs> uh, of this uh, level in Iceland to share these, these ideas with. Basically, I'm a, I'm a computer scientist with uh, an un unhealthy appetite in online communities and this type of work. And it's just very inspiring to be able to, to share the ideas here today. If you put your hands on the keyboard and move them one to right, you get Gomit. That's my name, Finnur Gomit, online. So you can find me on Twitter and, and Facebook if you have follow-up questions. Uh, but I'm going to cover this, this one-year experiment that I took part in where we wrote a new constitution for Iceland uh, in, in four months, actually. So this is, this is the process we went through. Uh, I don't know if you're aware about the background. We had a, the biggest financial collapse in Iceland. It, it was very, it had, had a tremendous impact on, our, on the whole community. And we had protests and a new government. And our prime minister, Johanna Sigurdardóttir, she was very adamant on creating a new constitution driven by the people or coming from the people. And we, we actually got a representative number of uh, the, the public into an auditorium for a whole day. So the national census, they, they selected 1,000 people randomly from all over the country, and they paid them the equivalent of one day parliamentary salary to you know, stay in and talk about what values, very much as in the Calgarian uh, project, we talked about vision and values, and what should our new constitution be all about. Uh, then we had an individual election, so we had over 500 people run for uh, a constitution council. And so it was a, a very big election, technically complex, but you could select 25 people. And that they were kind of made up the, the group that was then in, in charge of formulating the process. Uh, and we spent some time on deciding how we're going to do this. I was not actually elected, I was one of the, the staff members, so I, I ran for the CTO office and said I would run it as a, as a startup, and my background is, you know, communities and online, online dialogue. So they actually let me sit around the table with the people that were planning how we we're going to do this. And we got in people from the games industry in Iceland and software developers and a lot of hackers just considering how can we do this in the short amount of time and how can we make it as open participatory as, as possible. So we didn't have any policy to worry about. We could just take the ball and run with it as, as long as we handed in the new constitution in four months. So that's what we did and a bit more detail on that. So the, the crowdsourcing event, it was on the back of a, a grassroots uh, event we had a year earlier. So a few grassroots organizations, they came up with a, a model to talk about vision and values for the country, how are we going to get ourselves out of the crisis? So when the constitution revision work started, they wanted to just repeat that process. It was a, a very, very kind of good process. There's, a, there's an open, the script for the meeting is, is actually open, and I volunteered to, to do the technical part in there, and we worked with companies like IDEO and, and a few others in the, in the UK to come up. It, it was like just a, a big uh, event like this. You had, like I said, you, you need 800 people in Iceland to have a representative number for polls. So we got them in there, and you had farmers and fishermen and bankers and all sorts sitting around at the table for a full day. And the ideas from the tables, they were fed back into an, an IT system and into the auditorium again. And we, we started out very broad strokes, but then we got into individual uh, themes where we talked about more direct democracy, there was a strong uh, message to keep it written in a human readable language. You know, a lot of things were captured in that session that actually funneled the rest of the work and, and were used by the council members during the rewrite. And this is the slide with everything in it, which I'm gonna dwell on for a while. Uh, we touched on, on kind of agile and lean government uh, before the lunch break. Um, that's really what we do, and I think was the, the, the most successful decision uh, we made. The, the team of 25 were broken into three groups, and, and one of the, the elected members, he's the board member for a big Icelandic gaming company called CCP, they do a massively online computer game, and this council member, he stood up and said, there are better ways to write a document than you know, start at the beginning within closed doors and you know, write for three months and then publish the document. Let's do it iteratively. 
let's split the work into three groups and do weekly sprints, as is familiar with software development, if you're familiar with agile development. So that is what they did. We, we had a meeting every Friday, live webcast, where each group would publish their changes to the draft bill. So we did this 12 times. We had 12 iteration of the bill published weekly, open for discussion by the public. So anyone could come in and have a discussion about all the updates and, and the publications they were doing gradually. So the only difference in there, in, instead of, so I had to work with the legal team and the assistants to, to basically just write everything online and publish everything online and then worry about the paper trail later. It was driven by technology in, in, in that sense. And we did use social media channels as much as we could to support the process. So the discussion happened on our side, but we had Facebook and Twitter and YouTube going, mainly maybe because the, the Icelandic media was very missing from the whole process. So it, there was such a consensus and a good working morale, there weren't any conflicts or any problems, so there was nothing to report, obviously. <laughs> so so we, we became our own media channel to, to kind of engage with, with people. So this is not visible, I'll have to send you the link to this. Uh, basically, it's, it's an attempt, I was trying to make a screenshot of all of the versions. You can see it on my iPad later on. But it's, you can, you can gradually follow the 12 versions that we that published weekly and all of the dialogues regarding that. This is just a snapshot of all of the social media channels. Our, our Twitter channel quickly turned into English. So we had, we were actually featured on, top, uh, on the front page of Mass Massable and TechCrunch at the same time as Facebook did their IPO. I was above them for a few minutes there. So it captured a lot of the attention <laughs> of the international media. We had uh, demonstrators in, in Spain. They were so involved with the whole thing that we actually got a, quite a lot of feedback from them. But the main takeaway from all of this was that the communications worked. With regards to engagement, we in these weekly updates, we had quite intense discussions. We decided not to do likes and dislikes, which uh, kind of maybe limited the engagement rate. Uh, I know Egypt copied a lot of our work and they did this, that type of, of, of uh, rating the actual articles, but we wanted to keep it at a discussion level. And here's another unreadable uh, slide. Like the top 2%, that's uh, on a chapter. And then all these small images, that's a discussion. So in the middle there, you have one piece of article with roughly 200 comments, and you have a council member in there. So half of the council members were quite active in the social media channels, taking full part in the discussion. You have a 69-year-old Nils Gislason talking about separation of church and state, and you have a teenager saying, wow, and you have <laughs> As, as the council members coming in saying, we know that this is a hot topic and you know there's a lot of conflict about this, but let's keep the conversation uh, on topic here. And as you see, just a, this is just a small glimpse and you've got a university student posting poll numbers, etc. It was, it was deep engagement for this whole time, but we've touched on the level on engage, of engagement in these sessions before and a lot of questions seems to be around that. So my question to you is how, how much engagement would you assume for such a work? So the level of cognitive <laughs> load that you have to take on, you have to read text about you know, constitutional matters, and this is actually sitting down and writing a comment. So having an opinion, writing it down into a comment and taking part in the conversations. We had just under 1% of the nation discuss the document. And we had two staff, I was the IT department and I had a PR person with me who was doing the monitoring, but the, the uh, council members themselves did a lot of the monitoring. We had 3,600 dialogues started and a lot of comments under each one, so conversations around this. And in three months' time, we had 3,600 uh, conversations, uh, 40,000 individual visitors, 26,000 visits, and I forgot to mention, but it's a, it's a nation of 300,000 people, just over. So uh, I, was, I was a bit disheartened because we kept it as open and transparent as, as humanly possible. So I thought, surely there must be more people willing to take part in the conversation. But 
as the couple of years have passed, it's like I've had a lot of feedback and I, I believe this is the, the starting phase. We didn't have any baselines to compare to. Um, maybe 1% is, is okay for such a nation. And, and I want to take into account because we are the most broadband connected nation in the world. We've got 86% on Facebook. Uh, so access to computers or computer literacy was not a limiting factor in this case. Um, so yeah, it's just, it remains as an, as an open question and a, and a study topic. I wouldn't change the thing. We, we also got a budget of roughly two million for the whole thing. I handed half of it back um, you know, to the government in the end. We used open technology and basically what was available at the time. Uh, we would maybe have kept the dialogue around individual topics rather than versions of documents. You know, if, if we had to get back to this, but I think we've proven that, that you can run and maintain like an open and active participatory dialogue about legislative matters. And yeah, we'll just go into questions later on. Thank you very much. <laughs>